Hey, you guys, real quick, I want to give a black owned shout out. This woman commented under one of my videos, so I wanted to shout out her company. She makes t shirts, mugs, candles, soaps, and lip balms, as y'all can see by the bio. And let's scroll real quick just to give a good, quick look. I know I will be definitely checking in for the bath bombs. My six foot two ass can finally fit in the damn bathtub. Or found a bathtub I can fit in. But there you go. That is Miss Rescue Reed. Let me see if I can find her name in the bio real quick. Address her properly. Um okay miss rescue reed i cannot find her name but yep beautiful black woman y'all go and support her business all right hey you guys welcome back to my channel it's your boy tyson i hope y'all are doing all right today i've honestly had better days but i'm gonna muster up my strength to come up here and do a video for y'all um real quick thank you to my new subscribers um i see my uh, them numbers going up let's hurry up and get me to this 1k you know <laughs> just saying just saying but with that being said thank y'all for the support um so today's video i felt it was vital at this point to do this um it's titled this is what good black men do gentlemen and i put gentlemen because i didn't want to come off like condescending that's not what the point of this series and yes this is going to be a series bma it stands for black male accountability so i'm letting you know that now so if you're a black male who doesn't like that you're gonna to have to go um this is a series for men who are really trying to be community minded and maybe you're just not understanding every perspective maybe you're missing something um so that is what this is about i see a lot of men on social media asking black women to educate them educate me please educate me queen and i was confused because i don't know what dimension y'all are from but where i come from real patriarchy is men being the leaders men educating men giving guidance you know not to say that the women is just there to bear children and do nothing else you know but the gist of it is it's not a good look and you can't ask a black woman how to be a black man no more than you can ask a black man how to be a black woman so with that being said here's a black man here i'm gonna give y'all what y'all are asking for now let me make my target audience clear this is for the black men who are community minded they are open to hearing different perspectives they are also open to hearing where they fucked up where they are wrong because we are not perfect they are also familiar with the word collective which means overall population it does not mean i'm saying individually you did xyz or i did xyz i am just saying that overall the black men out of the community missed the ball here or hit a slam dunk here so if you are not ready to hear the good and the bad where we got it right and where we got it wrong if you feel like black people are fine where they're at as a whole this video is not for you i have given y'all the one warning i'm not doing it no more so i'm just letting you know and i addressed y'all as gentlemen because i feel like even if you disagree with the points i'm making we can keep this respectful that is my hope because i don't want to have to walk y'all like a dog because i'll get there with you i would had to block a couple people in the last few days for trying it under videos um not i mean obviously this is the first installment of bma but um with that being said now that i have laid out the point of the series and the target audience of the series i have let you know if this video is for you or if it's not that's as much kitty gloves as y'all are gonna get with this series from me <laughs> so enjoy it <laughs> with that being said again not trying to be condescending i'm just being real y'all are men they're, they're these are men i'm talking to so you should need all that damn you know hand holding and shit so with that being said let's start off sorry i got a reminder on my phone i gotta push that back um let's start off with um defining uh sorry defining accountability all right so the definition of accountability the fact or condition of being accountable also known as responsibility i also want to note silence is equal to complicity the same way we are telling white people you need to have these painful race conversations with your family or potentially painful 
if they do not, we would equate that to complicity. You just sitting there and laughing off the racist jokes, not saying anything, not saying it's wrong. Am I right? Okay, then. So now that we have that out the way, let's define masculinity. So masculinity, also called manhood or manliness, is a set of attributes, behaviors, and roles associated with boys and men. All right, so let's move on to the role of a real community-minded man. So a real community-minded man, he does not turn a blind eye to his people. When they cry, he is there with Kleenex. That's a little shitty analogy, but y'all get the gist of what I'm saying. That was a little corny, but he is there for his people. He cares. He listens. He provides. He protects. He builds. He problem solves. If an issue comes up, he will make sure that it is taken care of and rectified as easily and as swiftly as can be possibly executed. He also is going to promote the best versions of his image. He sees himself and his community as reflections of each other, which means he will also make sure that his women are promoted in the best light possible. Hallelujah. Okay, let me relax. So with that being said, I think we preached enough. Now we're going to move into the most common problem areas for black men. All right. So first up would be accountability. Next up would be protection. As far as accountability goes, um, I feel like black people in general have a problem with accountability. I'll be honest, not just black men. It ain't just them. However, and really nobody likes to be in the hot seat. You know what I'm saying? So it's a regular human reaction. Even if you cause the shit show, you don't want to have to answer it, answer for it. You know what I'm saying? Or if, as I said earlier, silence is complicity. So even if you didn't cause the shit show, but you sit there and watch idly while the shit show occurs and not do anything, nobody wants to be in the hot seat. You know, that's a natural human reaction. But with that being said, black men in particular, I've noticed accountability is not our strongest suit. Um, as far as protection goes, um, we are not trying to protect our women. We are out loud not trying to protect our women. We are telling them that just because you are a black woman, I am not entitled or you are not entitled to my protection. Meanwhile, they have no problem fighting for your stranger, unknown, random ass out on some front lines because they've been programmed to see in every black man that's been shot by the police, their son, brother, and uncle. Even though y'all don't have that same energy, you can't see your mother, sister, and aunt in them for some reason. So, um, and we really can't even protect ourselves. You know what I'm saying? That's just a harsh reality. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, white people do have a system in place that ki uh, allows them to kill us. But keeping it real, you know what I'm saying? Protection as, as a whole within the community where we could do better. Now, as far as um, the next one is finances. I recently did a podcast, actually two days ago, I think. Um, you can get the full episode on my podcast, but I did post partial of the video as I do with all my podcasts on YouTube, um, and it's called Financial Illiteracy Within the Black Community. And on that video, I'm breaking down the stats, giving some personal information and also facts on why um, I feel and also the facts that are telling us um, how we are behind, why we are behind, and then I'm giving you some personal tips that I've used. Um, so with that being said, moving on next from there, um, providing, creating, and building. Now, I'm not saying on an individual level, there are not black men doing this, but I'm talking about as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to sit here and complain about black women supporting the Asians by buying weave, okay, why don't you make a weave shop for your women so that way they don't have to go to the Asians? And that's just one example. I mean, you could look at, um, you know, we complain about um, them whitewashing our children with knowledge that's not true. Well, we should be building schools so that way they can have black schools with black teachers. You know what I'm saying? So um, counteracting white supremacy step by step. You know what I'm saying? And I see a lot of people, when we start breaking down specifics, things or specifics that are wrong within the community they say oh we need to focus on the bigger picture i don't know how y'all's brain works but um in the game of white supremacy 
Because this shit is a game to them. It, it is. And I'm going to touch on that throughout this whole series. Uh, it's a game to these um, white people. They want to keep their power. So we need to get in the game and play. Um, but you can't skip levels. You don't automatically get to fight the boss. White supremacy is the boss level. We're, we are nowhere near the boss level. I don't even know if we're past level one. So, um, and that's just me being all the way honest. So with that being said, um, moving on from there, leadership, um, premature dating. And I also feel like this goes in alignment with um, having kids before ready, but more so with the premature dating. Um, black women, they're not your therapist. Um, and I do understand that the whole single mother trope, even though a lot of y'all use it as an excuse, there is such a thing as the mothers who literally did minimal effort to raise their son and expect a woman to fix his problems when she gets older or when he gets older. I do understand that that's the thing. You know, they'll even say, "Woo, I'm glad you took him off my hands. I understand that that is a thing. But at some point you have to take ownership and responsibility for you as a man and go get your ass in therapy. So with that being said, moving on from there, um, behaving overly arrogant with nothing to show for it. As a whole, we are the bottom barrel of the men. I don't know if y'all are aware of that, but we are. Y'all can sit here and hold it online and talk all this, you know, um, excuse me, game about getting rid of, rid of white supremacy and all this. But if you don't have a game plan, there's nothing in place. All these other people, yes, they are operating within a white supremacist world. But if they say tomorrow, oh, it's a race war, everybody, you know, every race for themselves. Well, some of us are so damn divested that we'll be trying to fight on the other people's side. But none, <laughs> that's so sad. But nonetheless, we'll be shit out of luck. We'll be shit out of luck, really and truly. Everybody else has their own sense of community. We do not. Um, Y'all want submissive women? Give them something to submit to. And we will be touching on that later and specifically. Um, or in specific. Moving on, bastardizing our children. We can pretty much, you know, that's self-explanatory. Um, KKK, kings killing kings. Um, I wanted a way to put black on black crime on there without saying it because I feel like that's uh, white supremacist propaganda. However, we do need to address the violence that goes on within our community. Um, Next, cognitive dissonance about our role as men. Um, and I talked about that earlier with thinking that women need to educate us and they need to lead and that, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, even when we have these conversations, like I put the other day, the, the man in the grapevine who was saying that it's women and gay men on the front lines fighting for us. That's a problem in and of itself. And let me clarify, when I say the women and LGBT are on the front lines. What I mean is they are on the front line strategizing. Of course, we see black men at these damn protests. Just like we see black men holding up signs saying, your daughter loves every inch of us, so why can't you? Yeah, we see the niggas there. We see the niggas. We see black men there. And understand, when we say women are on the front lines, what we mean by that is they're the planning, they're planning, they're organizing, they're coordinating these events. It's them doing this. And they're also the face of the movement. And that in and of itself is problematic and also is not a good look on black, black men collectively. No other men is willing to put their women in a battle. Like, really think about that. Really, really think about that. So moving on down the list, another problem that I see with black men is gossiping way too much and way too much in women's business. I've talked about this before on my channel, the whole Ari Lennox Snoop Dogg situation, the fact that y'all keep having, having this natural hair versus weave debates and all women do wear weave, but let's keep it real. Our women wear weave. So we, we, know what you, we know what you're trying to do when you have those debates. You're not slick. You know what I'm saying? And then it's just a coincidence that y'all have picked the little mixed girl for the natural hair picture. But on uh, um, the weave side, it's the unambiguous black woman that y'all never seem to be able to find for love interest in your movies or your music videos. But that's a whole nother conversation that we will be having throughout the series. Nonetheless... All these think pieces that y'all are doing online, it's effeminate. It's not a good look. 
it does not look good for men to be sitting up there talking that much. You can have your preference, but stop vocalizing that shit. We don't need to hear it. Oftentimes, more than not, when black men are telling us their preference, it's not nothing positive. You can't prefer a girl who's in college. Like, even though that sounds a little pompous, I mean, it's never something like that. It's got to be skin tone or um, makeup or no makeup or we. How you think this shit looks? Really and truly. Sit there and think about it. Moving on. Um, next, I feel like. Another problem area we have is being too aggressive with each other and with our women. Um, I see a lot of y'all handle black women in the way that y'all would never dare to handle white women or non-black women. I know for a fact, old boy in that video, he would not have slammed a white girl upside the head with a damn skateboard. Or them niggas who threw that black girl in the trash can, they wouldn't have done that shit to a Becky. I can tell you that now. I, pr I can almost promise you that shit. So... They might fuck her. They might fuck her, though. They definitely probably do that. Gang bang a little ass behind the trash can, but they ain't finna throw her ass in it. I can tell you that much. So with that being said, and also as far as being too aggressive with us, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we men, but at the end of the day, the way that we come at each other sometimes, it, it just, it hurt me to see. I ain't even gonna lie. And my heart ain't but like this be, it's real small. But <laughs> but it hurts me to see. It do it do hurt me to see how black people in general handle each other. But this is about black men, so we're speaking collect uh, selectively about black men. Next up would be supporting and emotionally connecting with our women. Um, there is a a quote about this actually that I'm going to bring up. It's from Marilyn Fry, and. I'm going to insert it in the video, but I'm still going to recite it only because I'm going to post this on my anchor as well, which by the way, y'all need to go follow me on anchor. Go ahead and um, follow me on there. I'll be spitting and shit. So with that being said, give me one second. Wait, is that it? Okay. Marilyn Fry, the politics of reality. To say that straight men are heterosexual is to only say that they engage in sex, fucking exclusively with the other sex women all or almost all of which that pertains to love most straight men reserve exclusively for other men the people whom they adore or who they whom they admire respect adore there we go revere honor whom they imitate idolize and form profound attachments to whom they are willing to teach and from who they who they whom they are willing to learn and whose respect, admiration, recognition, honor, reverence, and love they desire, those are overwhelmingly other men. In their relations with women, what passes for respect is kindness, generosity, or paternalism. What passes for honor is removal to the pedestal. From women, they want devotion, service, and sex. Heterosexual male culture is homoerotic. It is man-loving. So sit there, digest that a little bit. I know she just said homoerotic. I know a lot of y'all going to have your damn G-thong in a tizzy. But um, really sit there and think about that. Marinate on that. And um, I think that can apply to more than just black men. I'm going to keep that all the way honest. Like I see a way, uh, the way a lot of y'all treat y'all male friends. And then I see the way that, you know, because, you know, I, I date. You know what I'm saying? And uh, double dates have been a thing in the past. And I see the way that y'all treat y'all girlfriends. And it's... It's two different things, and that's all I'm going to say. And not alluding to anything, I'm just saying, you know, let's be more cognizant of connecting with our women. So with that being said, um, next up would be a lack of sympathy and empathy for black women. After that, um, I would put next, over-sexualizing our women. Next up, promoting our best versions of us and our women because as a community-minded man your women are a reflection of you next overly awarding potential next up would be defending the trash of the community which i seen that firsthand with this damn the last two incidents um the black girl being thrown in the trash can and the whole skateboard situation Next up is glamorizing interracial relationships and dissing black women in the process. As I said earlier, your women are a reflection of you. So if you are sitting here uplifting these other women, then what do you think that tells their men? 
That tells their men, good job. You did a great job uplifting your women, making them your personal standard of beauty, unless this is a white person, which would be the standard, um, according to white supremacy. And also, real quick, because interracial relationships will probably come up in this series, I am not against them, nor am I for them. Do I think it helps the community collectively? No, I don't. But I also understand not everybody is going to be community-minded. So it is what it is. Um, Next up would be um, texturism, featurism, colorism, and colorism conversations. We hit and no, we miss the ball a lot within those three conversations. Um, Next up would be anti-black rhetoric, masters, jokes. I can't wait to get in on that one. And the last one is therapy, um, which I brought that up earlier with the whole premature dating thing. But um, therapy can be very soothing. I had a um, incident happen in my youth and therapy really helped me get through that. And um, sometimes the therapist is really just there like to listen that's really it listen and for you to hear yourself talk and then they'll ask you okay well why did you think that it's kind of like talking to yourself if yourself talked back to you and challenged you on it so that's another way to think of it i don't know if that helps you or not but with that being said this is the end of the first part i just wanted to get through the problems that way i've given y'all a clear explanation of what this um series will consist of So if you're interested, part two will be coming sometime next week. But um, just know, we're going to dig and we're going to dig deep. These conversations are going to be raw. They're going to be honest. I'm not hand-holding or coddling nobody. Um, If we're going to have any real motion after all this protesting and rioting is done, we need to get it together. And we need to get on one accord collectively. That means not all, not everybody, but at least most black men need to be on the same page. So with that being said, y'all, let me know what y'all think down below. If there's anything y'all would like me to talk about or to add to the series, let me know or DM me on social media. And I will catch y'all on part two.